Hello, higher algebra students. Back here with the third lesson of Unit 9, which is imaginary numbers. Uh, day 1, we'll follow up on this perhaps more later on with the operations side. But today, we're really going to focus on those situations where our discriminant was negative. And so we had a quadratic situation with no real solutions. And so we'll look at what we do in those situations and how we utilize imaginary numbers. So as we think about simplifying radicals, and we look at, for instance, root 12 and and uh, discussed the other day about how this could be rewritten as root root 4, root 3, and that's 2 root 3, or root uh, for 27 could be root 9, root 3, so that's 3 root 3. Again, just simplifying the radicals here, square root of 64 is 8. What happens with imaginary numbers is essentially we go through the same process, but we use a creative uh, little symbol here, an I for imaginary, and we re just rewrite this as 2 root 3, but with an I, meaning it's an imaginary value. Because if you were to type in the square root of negative 12 onto your, into your calculator, it would return an error because it's not necessarily giving you a real solution. This is an imaginary solution. But again, as you can see, this process of, for instance, in this case, simplifying radicals works all the same. It's just that we have this I tagged at the end. Um, to represent that this is an imaginary value, which means that the original root um, had a negative value under the radical. So th these imaginary values are, are uh, really known um, more broadly as, as complex numbers. Um, complex numbers could be a, a combination of a real and an imaginary value. Um, but again, this you can see here, Euler in the late 1700s here sort of used this I to represent just in sim simply neg uh, the square root of negative one. And then we started to add on to that and more broadly put other values under there. And, and again, you can see values that get um, put in front of it as real, real values that get uh, added or subtracted to it and things like that. So, um, so what this did is it really just made certain problems solvable because we started to think about this a little um, a little more abstractly. Um, so again, when we get that negative discriminant, we aren't going to say there is no solution. There's just no real solutions. Um, the solution exists and it is complex. So we'll look at that a little more here. But again, for these imaginary numbers, since the square root of negative one is i, that's why, for instance, that this would be like the, um, the root of 12 i, okay, or the the root of 27i. And so that uh, what you saw me do on the other slide there was just kind of preemptively putting this i in. Um, but again, this is is the um, sort of pulling out this i to be able to make what's left under the radical um, be kind of solvable that like we're used to having it be. So again, for instance, oops, for instance, having this turn into uh, the root 4, root 3 I was talking about is because we pulled out the i, we can kind of treat the rest of that like we treated just the square root of 12. And, and we've already done these, and so it's the same sort of thing that this is going to be 3 root 3i, three and this is 8i, and so So again, simplifying these radicals as we did before with this being 3 root 3 and this being 8, um, we'll get into this idea that i squared is negative 1. Um, that's actually where this idea comes from, where that, that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. But as we work through these, as we've done with these two already, um, you can see it's the same thing, it just has an I. Here it's the same thing, just has an I. Um, here it's the same thing, just has an I. Um, so this would then be 6I because it's the square root of 36I. So this would be uh, root of 54I. And again, 54 is uh, 9 times 6. In this case, so we've got 3 root 6i. And again, it, it's the same process of simplifying the radicals, as I've stated here, but just has the i at the end. So now, when we start to look at a problem like this here, this, uh, this quadratic here, this polynomial does not actually have any real solutions. The discriminant is negative, so it's no real solutions. So what we're gonna look for are complex solutions here. So in this case, we've got an A that's equal to one. We've got a B that's equal to five. We've got a C that's equal to nine, okay? 
And so when we set up this formula, the quadratic formula here, we've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So as we put values into this now, negative b would be a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 all over 2 times 1. So for that, all I was doing was putting the values of a, b, and c into this equation so that I could start to solve this quadratic. So as I clean this up a little bit, that gives me a negative 5 plus or minus, and this is where I think you'll just find it easiest to just do all the work of the discriminant. Again, this is the discriminant underneath the, the radical here. This whole thing is the discriminant, and you can see this is going to be 25 minus 36, so it does end up being negative. So I'm just going to put, oh, not that blue one, this blue one. So I'm going to put negative 11 under there. And then this is 2 here. Now, as you look at this, uh, in this particular situation, this negative 11 is really root 11i. So this is negative 5 plus or minus root 11i all over 2. So that's what we were doing before, just pulling out the i and making it a positive value under the root. Now, what we like to do is just make sure that this is simplified and reduced all the way down. So um, negative 5 divided by 2, well, that's negative 2 and a half, but it's, it, it can't be reduced at all. Um, it's really a 1 out in front of the, of the root 11 here, so we don't really have to worry about anything there. So this is actually our final answer. And again, it's imaginary. Um, it's a complex solution because this discriminant was a negative value there. So we ended up with no real solutions. And again, this is actually two answers here, negative five minus root 11i over two and negative five plus root 11i over two. And so that would be our, our solutions, our imaginary answers to this, uh, this quadratic. And again, the imaginary value is really just this portion here. Um, and the others are real values that are actually just uh, added to, to perform this complex value overall. So, um, so that's an example here. Again, our life was a little easier because we didn't have to simplify the radical at the end because root 11, 11 is prime. So there was no simplifying here of, of that radical, which we do want to get in the habit of if we can. If this were root 12, then we would like to simplify that radical because then we could start to reduce down the fraction. So here's another, a equals three here, b equals negative three, and c equals seven. Okay, so as we solve the quadratic, negative b, so negative negative three, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative three squared. And again, I'm putting it in parentheses because, again, negative three squared should be nine here. And if you put this without a parenthesis, for instance, in your calculator, you're going to get negative nine. So this is minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So as we calculate that, that would be now x equals 3 plus or minus the square root. Okay, so this is now negative 3 squared, which is 9. And then what we're subtracting here is 4 times 3 times 7. So it's, we're subtracting 84. Okay, so I'll just write it because this is a little more complicated one here. And then dividing by 6. And so we, again, see that we're going to have a negative discriminant. Okay, D is going to be less than 0 here again. Okay, so this equals 3 plus or minus, um, and this would be 9 minus 84 would give us a negative 75. So I'll write this as root 75i. Okay, and then that's over 6. And what you're going to see here is even on the left side, 3 over 6 does reduce to 1 half. So we're on our way um, to be to, to, to simplifying this fraction here a little more. So um, what we also see, though, is that 75 can be simplified. So I'm going to rewrite root 75 as root 25 root 3i. So again, I'm simplifying the radical just like I used to, um, but it has an I with it at the end. So um, again, there's, there's obviously a lot of steps here, but 
Um, we won't do a bunch of these problems as we practice. So this would be 3 plus or minus 5 root 3i all over 6. Well, what this is, again, is really 3 over 6 and 5 root 3 over 6. And, and what we're really looking at is what is the value in front of the root here, and can it be reduced with this whole number that's in the denominator, this integer in the denominator? And that can't be reduced, but at least we can reduce the first part of this um, to 1 half. However, if we try to reduce that to 1 half, then we also have an issue here with this 5, because if we only have a 2 on the bottom, we can't keep a 5 on the top. So what we're actually going to do is just re, and don't need to rewrite this, but just actually write it as is, um, or we could write it as 1 half plus or minus 5 root 3i over 6, because it really is two fractions there. But again, it's up to you if you want to keep a common denominator or not have a common denominator and to split this problem up. Um, but again, just keep in mind that 6 on the bottom is a denominator for both parts of this numerator, so that's why we can split it as we did here. So this example here, what you see is there is no x term. So b is actually 0 in this. So this is really x squared plus 0x plus 16 equals 0. So here we've got a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals 16. So as we write in the quadratic here, we've got x equals negative b, which in this case would be negative 0, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which of course is 0 squared, minus 4 times a times c. And then we're going to divide this all by 2a, which is 2 times 1. So you can see we've got a little different look here with this 0 involved. But again, that doesn't change our overall process. So we really have 0 plus or minus. Now, 0 squared is 0, so 0 minus 64 is what we really have. And so it would look like this. Well, we're going to rewrite that. Um, we could rewrite it as root 64i, but again, root 64 is 8. So this is really 8i over 2. And so it's just 8i over 2 or 4i, because again, it's 4i over 1 there if we reduce. So our answer here would be 4i. One other item to note here is how to simplify when you get some of these responses. And, and uh, this I actually should be on the outside, so I'm going to move it on the outside there. But um, when you look at a response like this and an answer like this, first of all, keep in mind that the 3 root 7, oh, not 3 root 3, 3 root 7 probably started out going backward here. Now is root 9 root 7 and root 63. So we actually simplified a radical to get to a 3 root 7 here. So keep that in mind first. Okay, so... In terms of the evolution of this answer, this would have started out looking like this over 3, okay? And then we started to simplify that radical. We rewrote it as root 9 root 7i over 3, and then 6 plus or minus 3 root 7i over 3, which is where this all started right here. And so now this is really 6 over 3 plus or minus 3 root 7i over 3. So as we solve this, what we're really going to do here is, is, is reduce here and uh, simplify here. So 6 over 3, of course, is 2. So 6 over 3 is 2. So that goes in front of the plus minus. 3 over 3 is 1. So instead of writing this as 1 over 1, we'll just write this as root 7i. So again, it would have been 2 over 1 plus or minus uh, root 7i over 1. And since they're both over 1, it's 2 plus root 7i over 1. So I probably could have done that a different color. And then we just don't, don't write that as a, as a fraction anymore. So our answers now are, in the end, 2 minus root 7i and then 2 plus root 7i. And this again is just the process of simplifying a response 
which again, probably started as a root 63 here, most likely. Um, and so we simplified the radical in these steps, and then we started to simplify the fraction as we went down here to finally get to our final answer. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have questions, as always, please ask.